Welcome back to Quilting as Desired. I'm Hollis Turnbow and I hope in the meantime you've been thinking about the quilting motifs and the quilting designs on your quilt. I want to show you a couple of additional examples now uh, going a little bit deeper into the idea of uh, this time to make your own stencils. On the table here I have a very simple quilt. Uh, I participated in a fabric exchange and got all of these uh, Civil War era prints and not sure what I wanted to do with it. They were pre-cut so I just sewed them together and made a center and then added two borders, a, a small border here and a large border here. Then started thinking about how it would be quilted. First consideration was what do I put in the blocks. It, it needs to be something that's fairly compatible, fairly easy, machine quiltable, so I found a stencil here that worked for me. The blocks are five and a half inches, the stencil is five inches, so therefore that gives me that quarter inch from the edge of the stencil design to the uh, uh, seam line that I need in order for it to fill the space. If I had one a little bit smaller it would work as well, but at least this one works. It's still compatible with its design so it will work fine. Then I came out to the borders and was not sure what I wanted to do. A very narrow strip, I think it finished up at one and a half inches, so I needed something very small. So I had this stencil, uh, just uh, waving lines, but it was three. So I said, well, I'll just use two. So again, look at the stencil to see how much you can use. So I decided to use just the two lines and it fit perfectly into that space. However, while this is a certain size, it might not fit into my space. So I went to the copy machine, I drew it off, I made a whole bunch of strips like this and sewed them together. And not sew them together, but taped them together down on, uh, on the piece. Came to the corner, the stencil does not have a corner. We get a lot of complaints and questions uh, from quilters about why don't you put a corner on the stencil? Well, the first thing is it seemed very obvious what you might do, but that was obvious to me, but might not be obvious to you. So the first thing I did was draw a corner in here. Drew on the paper an exact size of the finished border. Put the stencil up, decided where it would fall, where the corner would fall, and put some marks in it. So here I am. And in marking a border stencil like this, knowing that you have to make some adjustment here, always come well out of the corner. Don't do any jiggling around with the corner because that's the four consistent things your eye wants to see. So then I drew it down. I started adding uh, some other pieces to it. When I came down to the center here, Here's the center point right here. I knew that I should either be down in the valley or up on top of the mountain when I reached this particular point. So either of those places would be fine for the center. And when I came down here, I discovered that I needed to add or subtract three quarters of an inch. Now that tells me how I need to adjust the stencil when I put it down. So what I did, I would put the stencil down after I drew the corner. I would mark to the valley, slide the stencil just slightly, just a smidgen bit. Went to the top, slid it just a little bit. So when I reached this point, I knew that I was either down at the bottom or up at the top, and it fit perfectly. Since I didn't have a corner, and yet I wanted all the arcs to be consistent, I drew the circle, not the circle, but the arc here, and then with my double blade knife that I used for cutting stencils, I made myself a paper stencil. Now all four, four corners are going to be consistent. So stencils, they can be made even for the very simplest part. You don't have to do a full stencil. Very simple, when I came out to the outer border, it was the same situation. I made several copies of the stencil on the copy machine. I put them, taped them together, 
When I brought them down to the center, again, I discovered that I needed to enlarge each of these cables here just slightly so that my diamond here would come exactly on the point. So do a lot of playing around first so that you know exactly where this adjustment needs to be made. It'll save a lot of frustration. Now I need to take just a minute and get set up on the table uh, to show you an example of where I needed to recut a new stencil because absolutely nothing in the stencil company catalog would fit the space. So I'll be right back. 